Hi, welcome back to ChemTube channel. I'm Jegu Wong. Today we are going to discuss the SPP Trial Paper 2. Let's start. Why the solid magnesium chloride does not conduct electricity, but molten magnesium chloride can conduct electricity? So here we have two conditions. One is solid, one is the molten. Molten uh, magnesium chloride meaning that we heat it until it melts huh? okay so meaning that in the solid uh, magnesium chloride the magnesium and the chloride ions they are still in the fixed position but the molten uh, magnesium chloride it already in the melt uh, already melted so it the magnesium and the chloride ions can move freely okay so four marks here so how to explain this Okay, so point number one, we can mention they are no freely moving ions in solid magnesium chloride. Okay, number two, point number two. We can mention about okay, in molten magnesium chloride have has freely moving magnesium ion. And chloride ions. Okay. So number point number three, we can mention magnesium ions attracted to cathode and chloride ions. Attracted to and not. Okay. So, last point: the electrons flows from electrons flows from and not to cathode. Okay, through the external. Wire. Okay, so there are four points in, uh, in this question seven a. Okay, so we look at next question. So you are provided with molten aluminium chloride. Okay, molten aluminium chloride and concentrated aluminium chloride solution. One is the molten state, another one is in the solution. So electrolysis are pro uh, conducted by using carbon electrodes, uh, carbon electrodes to obtain uh, aluminium metal and the chlorine gas in each electrode. Okay, so here we have to pay attention here. The products will uh, form um, aluminium metal and the chlorine gas. Okay, so. Number one, choose a suitable electrolyte to obtain the products. Okay, so let's say, okay, we have to consider here if we use the molten aluminium chloride. Okay, so molten aluminium chloride it has only two types of ions they are magnesium ions, oh, sorry, aluminium ions. aluminium ions and then the chloride ions okay so if we choose this one definitely the products will be aluminium and chlorine gas lah. okay but here if we use a concentrated uh, aluminium uh, chloride solution okay so meaning that they are aluminium ions and then the chloride ions beside that it has hydrogen ions and then the hydroxide ions okay so for the concentrated okay 
the selected one is chloride is chlor okay still produce the um, chlorine gas okay but for the aluminium and the hydroxide hydrogen you pick the hydrogen ions so meaning that the products form it will not be the aluminium metal it will be the hydrogen gas if we choose the concentrated aluminium chloride solution okay so meaning that okay b1 uh, choose a suitable electrolyte to obtain the products so just now i mentioned already okay so number one the electrolyte used should be molten aluminium chloride okay so i explain how the aluminium and the chlorine are formed at each of uh, electrodes okay so number two So, number two, how to produce the uh, chlorine and the aluminium, okay, at the electrodes, huh? okay. So, the ions present are aluminium ions and chloride ions, okay. So, At the end not okay. The end not is positive, uh, positive terminal. Okay, so the chloride ions will discharge. Okay, to form chlorine gas. Okay, from chlorine gas. So at the cathode, the uh, aluminium ions will discharge to form aluminium metal. Okay, aluminium metal. Okay. So write the half equation, uh, half equation at, at cathode and the anode. Uh. So at the anode there, the half equation, the chloride ions, okay, it forms a chlorine gas. So here, anode undergoes oxidation, uh, so you should know that, okay, by lost two electrons. Uh. So there are two chloride ions, okay, so at the cathode. Aluminium ions will gain three electrons to form the aluminium metal. Okay, so these are the uh, six marks here. Okay, okay C table shows list of material apparatus and instruction to conduct an experiment to compare two types of cells huh? okay now we look at cell a and cell b cell a uh, same electrolyte sodium sulfate huh? okay electro electrode use zinc electrode and carbon electrode this one is uh, zinc electrode and copper electrode okay you are using uh, you are given beaker connecting wire and the battery okay and here uh, the most obvious uh, this one got battery this one got uh, voltmeter okay so connect the zinc to the positive terminal okay so positive terminal okay this one i prepare this diagram for you okay so for zinc to the positive uh, so positive is here so this one is zinc okay then uh, for the carbon this is carbon for the anode, uh, for the cathode, eh? okay. That electrolyte use is 
uh, sodium sulfate, uh, sodium sulfate solution. Okay. Now the other one, okay, no battery is given. So this one, battery here is negative. Uh, so it's given you the voltmeter. Okay, so uh, connect the couple to the positive. Okay, this one is either one. Uh, so let's say you put you put this one is copper, this one is the magnesium. So magnesium is the uh, negative, is the n not uh, n not. This one is positive. Okay. So in the vortex cell, the n not is negative. Uh. Okay. This is n not. Uh. This is cathode. Yeah. Meanwhile, for the electrolytic cell, n not is positive. Okay. This one is negative. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, sorry, this is should be cathode now. Okay. So okay, based on this okay, answer, uh compare the cells in terms of type of cell energy change half equation at A0 and cathode and then observation at A0 uh. ok so uh, 10 marks ok based on the comparison here we can actually use the table ok so we can uh, fill in the uh, table here like this uh, ok so first one we want to mention about the cell ok cell A and cell B uh. ok so number one, we want to mention about type of cell, right? Okay, type of cell. So cell A actually is a electrolytic cell. Okay, so B would be voltaic cell. Okay. So next would be energy change. energy change okay so energy for cell A is an electrolytic cell so it will be electrical energy change to chemical energy for vortex cell it will be reverse so it will be chemical energy change to electrical energy okay number three the half equation huh? okay so half equation at a naught and then the cathode huh? it's also the same a naught and the cathode so this one we have to look back to the uh, cell given just now. Uh. Okay, so at the end not here. Okay, so at the end not we have uh, zinc as an electrode. Uh. Zinc as an electrode. So normally if zinc is used, not carbon. Uh, so and zinc itself will ionize uh, because it is an active electrode. So meaning that the zinc, okay, I use a different color. Okay, so zinc, you ionize to form the zinc ions. Okay, so by release two electrons. Okay, so at the anode, sorry, at the at the cathode here. So cathode, we have to see the k uh, ions inside. No? So we have. Uh, sodium ions and then the hydrogen ions so based on the position in the electrochemical series so uh, hydrogen ions will be selectively discharged okay so will be hydrogen ions discharge so to form the uh, so hydrogen ions can uh, electrons to form the hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is H2. So 
need to have two hydrogen ions times two here. Okay. Mm. For the uh, vortex cell, okay, let's see vortex cell again. Okay, the one at the higher position in the ECS, be magnesium. So magnesium will ionize. Okay, more electropositive. Okay, then um, for the uh, we set the anode first. Okay, so same as make uh, zinc like the electrolytic cell. So magnesium ionized to form the magnesium ions and leads to electrons. Okay, for the uh, electrolytes uh, okay for the cathode here we have to look into the electrolytes okay electrolytes so electrolyte we have the same thing we choose the sodium and the hydrogen ions so same case uh, we we'll choose hydrogen hydrogen ions to be se selectively discharged at the cathode here okay so the same uh, half equation gain electrons to form the hydrogen gas okay so number four okay observation at the a not only yeah so a not observation at a not okay if at N0, we look into here, the N0 here. So zinc, we change to zinc ions. Eh? So we, will, you, we, can, we can mention il, uh, zinc electrons becomes thinner, becomes smaller. Lah, oh. Okay, so these are also the same. Eh? So magnesium electrons becomes thinner okay question number eight the following chemical equation shows the displacement of halogen eh? so bromine react with potassium iodide so it can displace the iodide from a salt solution to form the iodine okay so here actually we can write out the uh, oxidation number okay so bromine the molecule so oxidation number is zero so potassium iodide so potassium is plus one iodide is minus one this one potassium plus one bromide now becomes negative one eh? so iodine is zero okay so here set the oxidation number for the iodine in the potassium iodide and its role in the reaction okay so the oxidation number number is negative one eh? okay so negative one finally it changed to uh, zero means undergoes oxidation so undergoes oxidation so its row will be the row is s oxi uh, reducing because it undergoes oxidi oxidation eh? reducing agent Okay, mm. so write the half equation for the reduction reaction. So, reduction reaction. Okay, so this one, the uh, potassium iodide is undergoes oxidation. Eh? So, meaning that now we need to focus the bromine. Bromine undergoes reduction. So, bromine it undergoes reduction. Eh? So, it forms a bromide. Okay, oxidation number decreases eh? so here we need to have two bromide ions so in the reduction so we gain two electrons okay mm. next uh, diagram shows the photosynthesis process eh? okay so carbon dioxide react with water produce the uh, glucose and the uh, oxygen gas eh? okay so state the substance that undergoes oxidation and reduction in the reaction. So explain your answer in terms of gain or loss of the hydrogen atoms. Eh? 
okay gain or loss so here let's see okay carbon dioxide nah. carbon dioxide is here okay uh, so before that no hydrogen nah. no hydrogen okay but after the reaction okay it will gain the hydrogen okay so here gain the hydrogen meaning that is reduction okay reduction okay. for water h2o it initially is it has the hydrogen but at the end lost the hydrogen so it is undergoes oxidation okay so four marks so which one undergoes oxidation okay so here actually for this question we can uh, build a table if you want okay if you don't want you just use the st uh, statement is okay so meaning that point number one you can mention okay carbon dioxide undergoes okay reduction okay uh, because it gain hydrogen okay okay so two marks here point number two uh, water h2o undergoes oxidation because it lose hydrogen okay uh, so four marks here only two points you need to mention eh? next if a tree absorbs 270 cubic centimeter of carbon dioxide per day calculate the volume of oxygen gas release okay so this one involves the calculation so given to uh, to us is 270 eh? so volume here so 270 cubic centimeter so what is the volume of the carbon uh, oxygen gas release eh? okay so first step we have to find out the vo uh, number of mole for carbon dioxide so will be volume divided by molar volume volume divided by molar volume so volume is 270 divided by molar volume is 24 so use our calculator you get the mole is 11.25 mole okay so step number two we need to compare the mole ratio mole ratio we compare the carbon dioxide and the oxygen so six mole of carbon dioxide na, produce six mole of oxygen gas so here if 11.25 mole of carbon dioxide so the same 11.25 mole of oxygen okay so the volume of oxygen gas release will be more times molar volume so it will be 11.25 times the molar volume 24 hit the same 270 cubic centimeter okay so this is how we get the three marks <coughs> so see table 8.2 shows the information of two sets of experiment 1 and 2 okay mixture of metal P with copper 2 oxide nah. this one is copper with the oxide of Q okay so you heat it okay the mixture burns brightly okay the brown solid is formed this one the mixture glows dimly okay gray solid is formed yeah uh, so suggest the metal P and metal Q okay metal P and metal Q so here 
Okay, if we know that if the mixture it can burn brightly, meaning that if it can burn, uh, meaning that uh, the distance between the two metals in the reactivity series will be very far. Okay, if it just glows only, means the distance is quite close uh, in the reactivity series. So suggest a P and Q. So react with the the first one, uh, react with copper two oxide. Okay. So copper two oxide, so P react with copper two oxide. Okay, so it can burn, uh, so it becomes a PO and copper is formed. Uh, oh, okay, so meaning that P we can suggest uh, whether it's magnesium or carbon uh, or zinc. Okay, the other one will be Q. Uh, Q with Couple with Q oxide still got reaction eh, because it can glow. So meaning that like couple with Q oxide. So it forms a couple two oxide and uh, Q. Okay. Uh, um, actually, if we see the observation here, the this one gray solid is we can see the gray solid. Okay. But there will be some uh, black solid as well because carbon dioxide is black color. Okay, so here suggest method P and then explain the observation in set one and set two. So your explanation should include the substance that is oxidized and change in the oxidation number of the copper. Okay, so total is ten marks here. So here we can. Uh, Okay, number one, okay, suggested here, just now we mentioned already. Uh, just now we mentioned already, okay, P can be uh, magnesium or zinc. Okay, so Q, we will choose the one below the uh, copper, so only one that will be silver, silver, okay, silver. Okay, next. Okay, in set one, we will uh, explain one by one. Eh? Set one. Okay, set one. Uh, metal P with uh, copper two oxide. Eh? Okay, so metal P, let's say we put in the mag uh, magnesium. Eh? Okay, magnesium. Put inside the copper to oxide and then you heat it, it forms a magnesium oxide and copper is formed. So, we, from here we can explain one by one. Huh? So, we can mention magnesium is more reactive than copper. Okay, so magnesium. can displace the copper from its oxide. Okay. To form okay. So here we can see uh, magnesium here is zero, here is plus two. Or you can see it gains oxygen. So magnesium undergoes oxidation. Okay. Mm. Okay. So the oxidation number. change from 0 to plus 2 okay mm. so this is how we explain okay based on the question okay now how about the set 2 in set 2 okay so we replace in uh, copper with silver oxide okay silver oxide with HgO2 so it forms a copper to oxide and silver. 
So we need to balance the equation. So this one times two. Huh? Mm. Okay. So number one, copper is more reactive. than silver okay so copper can displace uh, silver from uh, X outside to form let me see here. to form silver okay so magnes uh, silver undergoes silver undergoes a uh, reduction how huh? is that mentioned okay so copper so here we mention about the copper so copper here is zero change to plus two okay so mm, copper undergoes oxidation okay copper undergoes oxidation okay so oxidation number change from zero to positive 2. Question number 9. Table 9.1 shows the observation for two different tests that are conducted on the salt X. Huh? So meaning that here, salt X is heated. Okay, test 1. Moist blue lemon pepper, it turns to red when it's placed in the uh, test tube, meaning that it will form the acidic. Huh? Acidic. And then when the glass rod deep in concentrated hydrochloric acid insert into the tube, white film is formed. So this white film actually is uh, the uh, ammonium chloride, nah? ammonium chloride. So meaning that this one uh, will be ammonia, react with the ammonia. Okay, uh, so it forms a uh, ammonium chloride film. Okay. So actually, what is the X gas X? Huh? So the gas X actually is the ammonium chloride. Huh? When it is heated, huh? it forms ammonia gas and the hydrogen chloride gas. So later on, okay, so ammonia will react with the test two, test two, huh? then hydrogen chloride will uh, involve in the test one. So based on the table, identify the X. Explain why the moist blue lemon pepper turns red in test two and uh, in test one. Uh. So the X so X uh, so X is ammonium chloride. Okay. Number two. Okay. Why it can uh, turn a moist blue lemon pepper turns to red in test one? Because hydrogen chloride, nah? chloride molecules, uh? mm, ionizing water. To produce. Hydrogen ions okay, that can show the acidic properties of acid. Okay, so this is how we answer the question here. Okay, B diagram 9.2 shows a flow chart of the lead salt. Nah? Okay. So lead 2 nitrate react with solution S. So it forms the lead 2 carbonate. So you have we have to choose a solution that contains the 
uh, carbonate ion uh, which is solution soluble sort of sodium uh, of carbonate salt so normally we will pick sodium potassium or ammonium uh, salt okay so let's say we choose here we, we just we choose potassium carbonate for example sodium carbonate actually also can be uh, accepted okay then let to carbonate react with the acid again so it forms a salt T yeah? so it forms a, actually is a lead to nitrate again hmm. okay so this is under reaction 1 and reaction 2 okay so reaction 1 here two solution it forms a lead to carbonate which is insoluble salt huh? is in the solid so here actually this is uh, uh, this is called precipitation reaction uh, precipitation reaction or double decomposition reaction uh. okay so a student mix uh, 50 cubic centimeter or one more per cubic decimeter solution S with 100 0. Point more or uh, two more per cubic decimeter lead to nitrate to obtain the lead to carbonate okay so based on the diagrams uh, suggest solution S write the chemical equation then calculate the maximum mass of the lead to carbonate salt form okay so 7 marks yeah so number 1 Okay, so suggest one, uh, let me see here, okay, suggest solution S, so solution S, okay, mention is uh, potassium carbonate, or po potassium carbonate, okay. So you can choose the uh, sodium carbonate or ammonium carbonate also can be accepted. Uh. Okay, next, write the chemical equation. So, let to nitrate. Okay, react with potassium uh, carbonate. Okay, so forms the uh, uh, let to carbonate and potassium nitrate. So it's not balanced, so we have to balance the equation. So this one times two. Okay, next. Mm, calculate the maximum mass of the lead to carbonate salt form. Eh? Okay, so here we can calculate first the number of more for the lead to nitrate. Eh? Okay, and okay for both solution we calculate first. Okay, number of mole for lead to nitrate. Eh? We use the MV over 1000. Okay, so M is lead to nitrate. No? Lead to nitrate is 100, uh, 0 0.2. So 0 0.2. 100 cubic centimeter over 1000 you get 0 0.02 more okay yeah, another one number of more of potassium carbonate eh? same we use mv over 1000 m is okay 50 okay 1 volume is 50 okay over 1000 okay so you get 0 0.005 more okay, 0 0.05 sorry you get 0. Point, okay, 0 0.05 more okay so now we have two uh, number of more here this is for uh, lead to nitrate 0 0.02 more this one is 0 0.05 more so here we have to select the limited reagent so which one is a limited reagent is a smaller 
value of the mole so we choose this one we do not choose this one okay so number of mole is 0 0.02 so we have to compare 0 0.02 with the mm, lead to carbonate okay so here we have to proceed to the next step okay more ratio uh. so one more of lead to nitrate yeah? produce one more of lead to carbonate okay so here is 0 0.02 more of lead to nitrate you produce the same 0 0.02 more of Led to carbonate. Okay, so finally we can find calculate now the mass of the lead to carbonate. Lead to carbonate more is more times the molar mass. Okay, so molar mass for the lead carbonate. Okay, zero point zero two molar mass for the lead to carbonate. We calculate first. So we total up all the molar mass given here. 207. Okay. So PBCO3. Yeah? Okay. So it will be 207 plus carbon is 12. All is 16 times 3. Okay. So you will get. 0 0.02 times 267 so is 5.34 gram okay so this is the mass of the carbon uh, lead to carbonate will be obtained next describe a laboratory experiment to prepare the salt tea uh, salt tea and write the chemical equation for the reaction too so the salt tea actually is the reaction between the uh, lead to carbonate with the nitric acid no? so produce the lead to nitrate and the uh, carbon dioxide and water no? okay so we have to balance the equation this one times two okay mm. so here how to do we explain or describe the experiment okay so 10 marks so first one we have to I mentioned about, about the procedure okay number one okay definitely we need to measure the acid first so measure 50 cubic centimeter of one more per cubic decimeter of nitric acid no? into a beaker okay so number two after we have the acid so we can add lead to carbonate uh, powder into okay nitric acid no? and heated gently okay, next we need to stir the mixture using the glass rod okay, so after that we can add in uh, add in the lead to nitrate in excess uh -huh. okay, lead to carbonate Lead to carbonate into acid uh, until excess. Okay, how do we know it is excess already? There are some uh, lead to carbonate powder it no longer dissolved. Then we we know that it is excess already so after you have the excess already we need to remove the excess or unreacted lead to 
carbonate powder okay filter the mixture okay to remove unreacted lead to carbonate powder okay so after you get the solution right so you can pour the solution into evaporating um, dish yeah? evaporating dish and Mm. and heat it heat it until saturated okay so saturated normally is one third one third of original volume remains okay next let it cool the mixture Okay. To room temperature. Okay. Then finally filter the mixture and dry. the salt na, produce crystal by pressing between uh, filter papers okay need two at least two filter papers now okay so the chemical equation now will be let to carbonate react with nitric acid so produce like two nitrate carbon dioxide and water need to balance the chemical equation so this one times two okay so here two marks so uh, eight procedure and then equation two marks so total is ten marks question ten a driver is suspected of consuming alcohol uh, and will be having a test to verify whether he is drunk or not okay diagram 10 shows the uh, tools that is used to detect the suspected drunken uh, driver okay so actually it's a glass tube filled with the acidified potassium dichromate 6 solution so uh, it blows into the glass tube huh? okay so here explain how the Two can detect whether the driver is drunk or not. In your opinion, is the is this an effective method to detect a drunken driver? Justify your answer. So four marks. Okay. So how this tool it can uh, detect whether the driver is drunk or not? Actually, is under uh, oxidation of alcohol. Okay. So, number one, so acidified. Okay, potassium dichromate six returns from orange to green if. The driver is drunk. Okay, because because here acidified potassium dichromate six uh, will oxidize the alcohol. 
So meaning that if the driver is drink the alcohol, then you oxidize the um, SD5 potassium dichromate 6, then it will change the orange to green. Okay, so I think, okay, so what do you think? Okay, so this method, uh, this method is effective. Why it is effective? Okay, because it is easy and fast way to detect whether the driver is strong or not. Okay. Okay, so four marks here. Now B table shows <coughs> the result of different reaction for the compound PQR. Okay, so here uh, P it can react with potassium manganese seven solution. So yes, not not react with uh, magnesium carbonate and then not react with hydrogen. Okay, so this is. Okay, so this is actually oxidation. Okay, so this is hydrogenation. Okay, so the one undergoes oxidation, but not undergoes uh, hydrogenation. So meaning that it is alcohol. Okay, so P will be under alcohol group. Okay, Q not undergoes oxidation and not undergoes hydrogenation but it react with the uh, uh, carbonate na, magnesium carbonate so this one is a carboxylic acid na, weak acid okay then R R undergoes oxidation and undergoes hydrogenation so only one homologous series that is alkene okay so from here we can determine which uh, homologous series for the PQR compound. Okay, mm. so compound PQR have the same number of carbon atoms, which less than four, less than four. So based on the table, identify the functional group and the molecular formula for the PQNR. Okay. So just now we we already mentioned it. Huh? So P. Yeah, so P is under uh, alcohol, so the functional group is hydroxyl group. Okay, and then the molecular formula we can choose any one of it, uh, which is uh, less than four. So let's say we choose the one ethanol. C2H5OH. Okay. Then how about the Q? Q is the carboxylic acid. Eh? Carboxylic acid. So the functional group will be carboxyl group. So we also choose uh, the one with same uh, number of carbon atoms. Eh? So it will be CH3COOH. Okay, how about R? R is alkene. Eh? Alkene. So it has carbon, carbon, double bond. Okay, so we C2H4. Okay, so this is how we uh, get six marks for this question. So next, in another experiment, compound P. Okay, so compound P actually is the uh, just now we mentioned is ethanol, huh? ethanol. React with compound Q. Compound Q is the ethanoic acid. Okay, to form the compound U. So alcohol with carboxylic acid, you form the ester, huh? ester. So name the compound U and describe the experiment to produce compound U in your 
description include the following aspects of procedure, observation, and structural formula for the uh, compound U. Okay, so under esterification, uh, how do we conduct the experiment? So procedure first. Okay, number one. Okay, we need to measure volume and concent concentration uh, and pour 5 cubic centimeter of ethanol into a boiling tube uh. okay so number two measure and pour another uh, 5 cubic centimeter of ethanoic acid into the uh, ethanol okay ethanol uh. okay next Add, we need some catalyst. Uh, add few drops. Uh, okay, few drops or five drops of concentrated sulfuric acid uh, as a catalyst. Uh. Okay, using dropper into the mixture. Okay. After we in the cons uh, catalyst, we need to okay check the boiling tube to make sure it is mixed well. Okay, next we can heat okay, heat the mixture gently until it boils. Okay, until it boils for a few minutes, let's say for what, two minutes. Okay, so next you will see eh, a sweet smell colorless solution. Eh? Okay, a sweet smell, okay, and then colorless liquid eh, is formed. Okay, and then it floats on the uh, layers of the uh, liquid. Okay, it forms two layers of the liquid. Okay, so next, let's see what is the information again. Okay, we need to. Uh, so number six actually is observation now, huh? so we need to draw the. Uh, structural formula so structural formula okay this is for from the acid carboxylic acid now so two carbons okay so hydrogen okay then the other side is from the alcohol i use different colors So actually, the the extra produce will be ethyl ethanoid. Okay, describe briefly how the compound R can be converted into compound P. So compound R just now actually is the alkene. Uh, so just now we mentioned it's ethene. Compound P is uh, alcohol just now, so it convert to ethanol. So ethene to ethanol actually is undergoes uh, hydration. Uh, hydration. Okay, so describe briefly how the hydration occurs. Uh. Okay, so number one. Okay, so flow the gas R uh, into the steam. Uh. 
okay then at we have to use the temperature under hydration is 300 degrees Celsius and then the catalyst is uh, phosphoric acid okay concentrated phosphoric acid huh? and then uh, pressure is 60 atmospheric pressure okay so uh, this process is called hydration process okay mm. so this is how we present our answer Thanks all for the SPP trial paper 2, section B and section C. Do share with your friends and uh, do comment if you have any questions. Thank you very much.